Hey everyone, so what we're gonna cover in this tutorial is how you can use Zoho for professional email for your custom domain that you've purchased. And so you can save money on that while also using the Gmail interface and connecting it to your Gmail so you can both receive mail from that email address as well as send mail as that email address all for free. And now let's rehash kind of why you may want to do this, right? So I always recommend these days that people go with Google Workspaces if at all possible. Their business starter is just $6 a month and you can add up to 30 additional domains completely for free, right? And I have a video on that. You can take a look at it. Now, the only issue with these domains domains that you can add is they are mailed and signed by the primary domain, right? Which for most of us, that really is not a huge deal breaker, but for some people's use case, it may be. Now I am going to create a video either today or tomorrow going over an approach you can use possibly to avoid that issue happening of it being signed by the primary domain. But now let's talk about Zoho. Let's say Google Workspaces is a little too expensive for you. Zoho can be a great alternative in my opinion. They're light mail plan is extremely cheap, $1 a month, and you can add up to 30 additional domains completely for free, and they don't have any of the mailed from the primary domain limitations that Google Workspaces has. Now, one possible issue that some uh, people on Twitter have actually brought up, there may be some issues with the reputation of Zoho's mail servers. So that could potentially affect deliver deliverability. Now, in my testing, I've never had any issues and if you watch my video on setting up professional email with Zoho, I was able to send an email to my own Gmail account, this account we're about to use, and it had no deliverability issues. And that was a completely brand new domain that an email had never been sent from. So I haven't seen any issues, but as always, do your own research. And so let's stop my ranting here and let's just get started with this tutorial. So how do we do this? Well, the first step actually is to go to the Zoho Mail admin console. You're going to want to go to, let me just move this over, to the users tab, okay? Then go to the user that you're going, that you've set your email up with. I created this user that I'm gonna delete because this is more of a test and then go to mailbox settings, okay, here, then go to mailbox actions, and just make sure pop access is turned on. We're gonna need it. Now, let's go back to my Gmail account here, and we're going to click on settings, see all settings, and then we're gonna go to accounts and import, and the first thing we're gonna do is go to check mail from other accounts and click on add a mail account. Then you're going to see this window in here that looks like it was designed in the mid-90s. <laughs> and uh, let's go ahead and add the email that we want to be able to send from john at url to text.com. That is a new tool I'm working on. Okay, username. It's going to be the exact same for Zoho. Password. We've got this really short password they provided us with which is definitely not a secure password. Okay, this is pop, and this is a professional account. So we're gonna be using this domain to access the email from for Zoho, poppro.zoho.com. Port is nine, nine uh, let's look it up, I always forget. Okay, let's go to their pop details. Port is 995, and yeah, okay, pop pro. So let's go back to settings. And we have to pull up that window again, 995, so I was wrong. We're gonna click on leave a copy of the retrieved message on this server. We're gonna click always use a secure SSL connection and we're gonna label incoming messages as that email so that we can differentiate them. Now, this should be pretty easy. Let's click I add account and then it's gonna ask you, yes, I would also like to send mail as that identity, so let's do it. We're gonna put in just the fake name here, John. Just put John, it doesn't matter. Well, I'll put this, because we already done this as a test. Okay, treat as an alias, yes, we wanna check that. Next step, we have to set up the SMTP servers. This is the, uh, the outgoing servers that it's gonna be configured to use. And we're gonna use john at url to text.com. We're gonna use that bad password again. 
Okay, TL TLS, and I believe it's port 587. Let's double check here. Yes, for TLS, it's port 587. So that should be good. There you go, add account. Congratulations. And then we're gonna go to the inbox and we're actually going to refresh it. Should show up relatively quickly. There we go, Gmail confirmation. Keep in mind, this email was actually sent to john at url to text.com, so it actually went all the way to the Zoho servers. And then it got routed to here when Gmail pulled it down. We're gonna click on this. We're going to click confirm. And there we go, we are good. Now, the next step here. Okay, next step, we can go to compose because we should now be able to send mail as that identity. So we've got myself, we've got John at URL to text, and then we can just go ahead and send it straight to myself. And let's do this, let's say hi there. Hi there, and let's click on send. It was much faster than I actually expected, um, but there it is, and let's take a look at this. Yep, so mailed by URL to text.com, everything looks good. And this is exactly how you can set it up to where you can use the Gmail interface and uh, then use with a, with a custom email domain that you set up and you're just paying the Zoho price here. So this is a great approach I like if you do not like the pricing of Google Workspaces. As always, let me know in the comments if you guys have any questions or any other tutorials you wanna see. I am going to be doing a video tutorial on more email stuff actually. So going to be doing one on, uh, oh, correcting that Google issue. There's supposedly a way, like I was referring to earlier, about how you can get around that limitation of Google Workspaces having it mailed by the, uh, the, uh, the primary domain, but we'll see if it's worth it. I don't, for most people, it's probably not worth it. Then I'm also gonna be doing an email on this BIMI settings that you may be seeing or hearing about um, for email. It's a DNS record you add, something to do with the logos. So I will be doing some research on that and then making a tutorial video on that and we'll be talking about I'm gonna to have to do some research actually, I've never heard of this. So we're gonna see like, you know, is this something you should do? Is it worth it? But that's it, have a great day.